we have a lot to catch up on. I think it's time that we do a life update Q&A. My hair is currently air drying, so if it looks horrible, I apologize. I was wanting to look super cute and like get really good lighting in the daytime, do a full face of makeup and then film this video. But then I was like, no, let's just do it now. I'm about to hit the hay. Yeah, it's fine. I hate long intros, so we're just gonna get right into it. First question, are you gonna get your master's as well? I'm not opposed to it, but as of now, I simply just want my bachelor's degree. That way I can have something to say that I did the four years of college. That's always been extremely important to me. And so just having a degree that I can physically hold my hand is something that I'm gonna be just extremely proud of. And if I decide to not continue pursuing social media one day, knowing that I have this degree to fall back on would be enough for me. Like I said, not opposed to getting a master's, but it definitely would be a lot more work. Realistically, it would probably be something that I would go back and get later on in life once I completely stop social media for good. How to deal with people who talk bad about you. Literally, just don't. Cut them out. Why would you want to stay friends with people who talk bad about you anyways? Life is way too short to keep making excuses for people who don't put you first. Favorite coffee slot? No. We're gonna pretend like I did not just say that. Favorite coffee shop slash drinks. Okay, favorite coffee shop for all my Boise college viewers. Caffeina, Push and Pour, A Cafe, Flying M Coffee, The Human Bean. What's another good one? Form and Function. I really love Form and Function. It's super cute in there. But when it comes to drinks, iced lavender matcha with oat milk, iced vanilla latte with oat milk, brown sugar shaken espresso with oat milk, cold brew with either sugar-free vanilla syrup or lavender, and then oat milk in that, and then anything pumpkin chai. Hands down on my knees. It is so good. How are you so positive and happy over the smallest things, Caro? I struggle to find meaning in life. I want to remind you guys that everything that I post is something that I edited, revised, and then put out on the internet. I am just one of the many other creators and people that share their life online. So please don't ever compare yourself to a unrealistic standard. Even though what I do put out is 99% me authentic and I always keep it real. There is the small percent that you guys don't see, like when I have really bad days and when I'm down or sad, things that make me super positive and keep me positive is just surrounding myself with people that make me feel my best. Because it is really true, as cliche as it is, that you are who you surround yourself with. And if you don't believe that, then maybe, maybe you have some things that you need to reflect on. I do not want to be known as hanging out with people who talk bad about each other, have no goals or aspirations in life whatsoever, and genuinely are just crappy people. I want to be known as somebody who has friends that are just kind, genuine people and emphasis on the word kind. I think as I've gotten older, that's just something that's become a lot more important to me because it's not only something that people our age see, but kindness can be seen in so many different levels and ways from people younger than us and then people older than us. And yeah, you only live one life, so don't be a bad person. Plans for your 20s, I love you by the way. I love you too. I know that life changes and things don't always go according to plan, but I am a planner, that is just the reality. I use my planner every single day and live by that thing. Ideally, I would love to be married in my 20s. I would love to at least have one kid in my 20s. I wanna graduate college, purchase another home, keep building up my credit, just travel and be happy. All while remembering that God is at the center of it all and without him, I don't have anything. I would say this semester especially, I have really, really grown in my faith. Learning more about the Bible, having talks and praying one-on-one -on -one with Jesus has been really, really transformative in a way that I was not expecting to have at all this semester. I will credit a huge part of that to the people that I keep close to my heart and in my circle. That has played a really big influence on that journey. So I wanna keep growing in my faith and just being me and not conforming or changing for anyone or anything. Are you still in your single girl era? No. <laughs> What's one thing you wish you never gave up on? Gosh, I really, really wish that I had given a little bit more with singing. That is what started my channel in the first place. For anybody that is new and has no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay, I'll explain. In a nutshell, when I was younger, before I started YouTube, I used to sing the national anthem at all of the University of Texas sporting events. So today, I'm gonna be singing at the UT volleyball game, and UT is, well, that was really bright. It stands for the University of Texas 
um, the Longhorns. I've been singing for their sporting events for the past three years now, I think. And yeah, this is just gonna be another vlog. <laughs> go an hour before the game, do sound check, and then perform before a baseball game, a basketball game, softball. It was so, so much fun. And I think in that time in my life, I didn't realize like how cool it was just because it felt so routine based. I did it all the time. I would leave school early to go do it. I would get dismissed on a Thursday to drive down and sing the national anthem at Fort Hood Military Base. That kind of was my whole life before YouTube. And then when YouTube rolled around, I started filming and writing a lot of songs. And a lot of people don't know, but I have music out on Spotify, iTunes, all of that. And it's been a long time since I put out anything. I focused on that for a bit. And then a little bit after COVID is when I stopped doing that. Part of it was burnout. And then the second part was just my life was really, really busy, especially because I made the decision that I wanted to go to college. And so doing this job and then going to college as a full-time student, being a dog mom, and living alone and managing a house is a lot of work. And as much as I would love to pursue singing and continue with that, I think right now is not the time. I'm not opposed to it and who knows, maybe one day I'll get back into it. It's just a very cutthroat industry. If I had continued with it in this stage in my life, I would be a completely different person. I could sit around here all day, throw myself a pity party and say that I have regrets for not pursuing it. But I'm so confident and grateful that I've been able to have the closest thing to a normal college student life while also having a very, very abnormal job. What type of content do you want to share after college? I feel like this question is very similar to the one about being in your 20s and whatnot. A lot of influencers that I watch that are family channels, I see that they're not showing their kids as much. As of right now, I am not planning on showing my kids faces in my YouTube videos once I do become a mom and that's if I'm still doing this by then same thing with whenever I'm married obviously that person is gonna be in my life and probably on my channel Caroline Manning is the name of my channel and I want to keep making it organic and authentic and so just like how I graduated high school, am going through college right now, am gonna be married and am gonna be a mother. I want the focus of my channel to be about me and my journey through that instead of like forcing a camera in my kids' faces or my marriage or relationships. I think it's bittersweet and special keeping that private, but obviously whoever I end up marrying, you guys are gonna see. It's just not gonna be like a couple's channel. Not really into that. I think that is a recipe for a disaster. What's the most meaningful thing in your life right now? Well, after celebrating my birthday in Utah with my best friends, I would definitely say currently them, the friends that I've made here in Boise. If you asked me a semester ago, right after I got off of semester at sea, I would say my friends on semester at sea. But now that I have been here for my fourth semester of college and am about to finish my sophomore year, I couldn't be more grateful and thankful to have been able to get off the ship and come back to friendships and to a community where I feel extremely loved and just really special like it's really hard to find nowadays especially with girls because girls can be very petty and very mean and catty fortunately that is not the case for my friendships here i don't know just feeling very grateful for them and i'm so excited to continue doing the last two years with them here how do you stay confident with your body and do you deal with insecurity obviously everybody deals with insecurities and i used to think for the longest time that i didn't have them i had them i don't know what i was smoking but um but we all have insecurities whether it's outside physically 
or inside mentally, personally, emotionally. When it comes to body image, I don't want to beat around the bush and say things that you probably have heard online and you know, sensitive, whatever. I'm just going to keep it straight up and real. I realized that if I want to be able to have kids, which my goal in life is to become a mother. The sad thing is that a lot of people in my generation would laugh at that and say that is the stupidest thing ever. But being a mother is something that I have always looked forward to since I was little. And if I am starving myself and not eating enough, there is a chance that I will not be able to have a child and become pregnant because I wouldn't be healthy. And that completely changed my mindset when I was going through a really weird eating phase, just looking at myself in the mirror and not liking what I looked like. Something that also really helped was realizing that we have one body in our life. A lot of that comes from genetics, which contributes to how we look. And the reality is we can get as much surgery as we want, but there's always gonna be another thing that we're unhappy with or that we're not satisfied with. And personally, I would rather spend my life maybe not looking like the beauty standard, which we created as people who are flawed and not perfect whatsoever. I would rather not fit in that cookie cutter mold than be at war with myself every day. I love food. You can ask anybody in my life and if you watch my videos you know this girl loves food and on top of food i love sweets biggest sweet tooth you're ever gonna watch i am gonna eat that stuff are you kidding me like if somebody is gonna look at me sideways and make me feel bad for eating what i want to eat respectfully all i gotta say is projection and that person is probably going through something but that's not my problem. What are your top five makeup products? I'm just gonna go off the top of my head. Um, Glossier Skin Tint, Kosas Concealer, Laura Mercier Translucent Powder all the way, Cleo Cosmetics Eyebrow Pencil, and then for highlight, I would say the Merit Glow. I think the shade I use is Citrine. Those five products just came to mind whenever I read that question. Someone said, do you have any mental illnesses? I don't think so, and I would hope not. What is adulting really like? Finding yourself. Okay, why do I look like Casper the Ghost right now? What's going on? Let me turn on the brightness. Shrinking your circle of friends, which can sound scary, but in reality, it's a blessing. Trust me. Quality over quantity, you guys. I'm gonna say that again. Quality friends over quantity of friends. Another really big one getting close with your family my dynamic with my parents changed a lot when i moved out and went to college so many states away from texas it changed in a really good way you can turn 18 and legally you're an adult but just because you wake up one day and the day before you were 17 now you're 18 you don't magically become some like super woman adult where you gain all this maturity and whatnot it really is just a number it's what follows after that now that i'm 20 which is so weird to say i I don't even want to say that I'm 20, but now that I'm 20, I can truly say it's the two years after you turn 18 where you really can take a step back and just see that because you've matured and your mindset has changed and you're forming all these opinions for yourself that maybe looked a little different than what your parents have. They see you in a different light. And I think this also accounts for siblings as well. You start getting treated like an adult and it's a really scary, weird thing, but I also think it's a beautiful thing. I personally think that my relationship with my parents just only got better ever since I became an adult. Okay, we've got three more questions. How did you lose weight? Before anybody asks, no, I did not do a calorie deficit. I don't really believe in those things. I know that scientifically they work. I eat a lot. <laughs> I don't think I could physically do that just because I eat so much throughout the day. Yeah, there's no way that I could burn more calories and like force myself to work out exceeding what I eat in a day. So no, did not do a calorie deficit. Um, I go on walks every single day with my dog. If it's raining outside, sorry Matcha, he's staying here. I'll go to the gym and just like turn on a podcast. If I don't hit 10,000 steps a day, okay, that's fine. As long as I'm walking and moving my body, that is enough for me. I started lifting heavier weights, not really in my, my upper body or my arms, but definitely for my glutes and my legs. Doing bar and Pilates also really helped change my body a lot. But I would say the biggest thing is up your water intake and just don't think about it. It's easier to say than actually do. The times where I was so unhappy because I felt, I don't know, bigger than I usually am was because I was 
so focused and like micromanaging what I looked like, what I was eating, and if I was working out long enough. And that's not healthy at all. And if there's anything that I took away from that whole journey of losing weight and whatnot, it's all from your mindset. And if you're constantly stressing yourself out, you're gonna feel it in your gut and you're gonna feel it in your whole body. And yeah, you're probably not gonna see any progress because you're making yourself physically ill. Also a big contributor, which maybe I should have started off with this, was getting off the pill. Never, ever, ever going on birth control again. I really, really wish that I had not just gone on it when my doctor gave me a quick fix to having really bad menstrual cycles. So, but that's besides the point. Yeah, getting off the pill, I lost a lot of weight too. What did you want to be when you grew up as a kid? When I was little, I always wanted to work at a nail salon. I still want to do it, maybe for like a week, but I think as like a full-time job, probably not. Now that I know how gross people's feet are, Nope. I would do fingers though and do manicures and stuff. My respect for people that work at the nail salon is through the roof because the things that those people have to deal with, mm-mm, no ma'am. Yeah, for some reason, I always wanted to work at a nail salon. I like told everybody that and I just like paraded it around. I was like, I can't wait to open my own nail shop. I can't wait to decorate it really cute and like give people foot massages. Now that there are really scary men out there, Absolutely not. You will not catch me giving a foot massage. Okay. Last question, and I guess we'll end on this one because I want to form it into a question. So someone said, when's the next podcast episode? So I have a podcast on Spotify called Letters from Caroline. I started it my freshman year of college in October. It kind of was just like a spontaneous whimsical thing. I didn't set it up through my management team because I didn't want to make profit off of it and have sponsorships. I just wanted to make it authentic. I didn't want anybody to hold me to a schedule. I just simply wanted wanted to record when I felt like it and then upload it, but it's been a while. I think it's been over six months since I posted my last podcast episode. So if you want me to release more, comment down below and let me know. I don't know, I guess that's all I'll say, but I'm not opposed to it. I still have all my equipment. I can still film and record some. I just don't know if y'all want me to. So on that note, I am going to bed. Um, I did in fact take my retainers out because I was doing homework before this They're going back in and girly is going to bed So <laughs> if you guys liked today's video make sure to give it a thumbs up And if you didn't don't do anything. Thanks for joining me listening to me chat and ramble We're GM streaking it right now because I'm about to collapse. I love y'all so much and I'll see you in my next video Ciao I can close my eyes and breathe A song in good conversations Tastes just like medication